Okay, in this episode, we're going to look at F Expansion's Guru product. I'm going to take you through some thought processes about how I might create a, a pattern that I'd use in a demo. Um, functionally, Guru is a beatbox drum machine type thing where we have the basic pattern that I can say I want a certain instrument to play in a certain time. Um, I can map all of these to specific either keys on my keyboard or pads on my uh, my MIDI controller. Uh, what we can very easily do is add a sound. So I'm going to select my kit, click on kit, and my kick in. I'm going to select from my library, go to pads. Um, so you can select the, the instrument. You don't have to actually align a kick drum with this pad, but for our cases I'm going to. So. And now let's put in a snare drum. And I'm looking for a snare drum. There we go. And I can put in a basic 8 bar. Notice that as I make a mistake, I can right click to erase it, left click to add it. Or I can hold down my click button, a little machine gun effect. Now, here is my beat per minute, my tempo. By dragging up, I can increase it. Dragging it down, I can decrease it. Now, if you're going to use some of the, uh, the groove uh, timings that are built in, you need to bring this puppy down to around 90 to 100. And that's when you start feeling the swings. And we'll just play with a couple here so that you get the sense. See how that changed on that triplet there? Pick a different one. So again, each of these little swing routines, algorithms, give you just a bit different texture on the sound. So now let's add in a high. Notice here, it's telling me what, uh, what the instrument is, and we'll just add on the eights. And then what I might do is do this. For the musicians, these would be like dotted eights. Again, right-clicking, and I can erase that whole pad. Now, each of these, these pads can be edited. I can go to the pad edit, and I can trim down the sample. Maybe I don't want to start right at the beginning. Maybe I want to far more. So this puts a little more air in front. I don't want so much air. Maybe there's a part inside the sample that I want more than the beginning. Uh, within the pad, I can do some basic effects. I can put a bit of a compressor on it. Notice I'm just dragging the mouse up and down. Change the parameter. And the value of that parameter, you can see on the left-hand side. Every time I move my mouse, it disappears. But you can see that 10, 13, 14 over here. Now, I also have some uh, auxiliary effects. So these are like your master sends. I'm going to put a little delay in. I'm going to go back to my pad, and I'm going to send that out. If I need to adjust the effects, I can go back to my auxiliary effects, increase the mix. Maybe I want as a second, I'm going to put uh, a little reverb and go back to a pad, send it out. Adjust my snare down and send it out. I'm being very overly aggressive on that snare so you can hear that effect. And we can also go to my master mix. And on that master mix, I can put some particular effects on it. Maybe I want a uh, Presser on that master mix. A little harsh. Again, the master. 
blast will change the effect on everything, or it'll glue all the little pieces together. The key things uh, you kind of need to identify here, the ability to change your, your rate here. Now I changed the whole tuning of the whole, the whole pattern right there. Master volume. Key thing pattern, I can add and subtract bits and pieces by just clicking or right clicking. There's not much more to it. Now, a couple of things if you're using it in your DAW. Go to options. I'm just going to turn it off here. Under audio, there's this thing that says ignore host transport and tempo. If this is off, such as it is now, it will pick up on your DAW's time clock. It will start and stop when your software stops. By clicking this on, it ignores it. When you're in your DAW, each one of these things is an individual pattern. So let's just look at my pattern. So there's my first. Now these are all empty because I haven't used them. Um, but what you can do is just click here and drag this onto your MIDI track. Simple as that. Just drag it onto your MIDI track and that pattern will copy right onto your MIDI track and play through this. Uh, each one of these can be assigned to a separate channel so you can have literally one track on up to 16 channels. Now remember here that right now I've got a uh, four bars times sorry eight bars times four beats. Let's just go to a second pattern here. Maybe I only want a small 16 or a four, uh, four bar loop Notice I'm clicking on steps and I'm dragging up to increase or going down and by multiples of four, which means there's four beats to the bar, four times, in this case, five bars, but I want to go down to four bars, which will be 16. It's as simple as that. So there you have it. There's the basic uh, setup of a, a guru pattern. Um, there's lots to play with. I'll get a little more detailed in some other sessions, but for grabbing the software, it's fairly inexpensive. It's around, uh, I think I downloaded it for $200 online. comes with a decent selection of rhythms. What you see here are some that I've, I've downloaded off the net, which are samples from uh, old school uh, drum machines. But you can mix and match uh, fairly easily. It's, it's a really slick, uh, efficient tool for creating basic, basic drum tracks. Uh, we didn't go into a lot of it, but one of the other things we can do is if we look at graphs, this is part of the power of this thing, is I can click on the volume graph for that particular instrument. It's as easy as that to sculpt out uh, volumes. So now everything's max volume, and I'll right click now, and I'll say in these parts, it's I've lowered the volumes. It's as simple as that. Uh, there's so much to talk about in that way, but for right now I just want to focus on showing you the basics of F-Expansion Guru.